Hey, welcome to Access Central TV. Hey, I'm Mikhail, and this is Nell, and we got for you... We got M80 coming up, which we've had on the show before. We love them. And we got Heather Mache, a diva from L.A. <laughs> We're we, going to love her. We're we also her up. Nummy, nummy, nummy. We also got um, Gray and God, the band, oh, and we have our buds sweet. from Asylum TV much, in welcome. Australia. That's right, Australia. <laughs> oh, Australia. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Mikkel and Mel. with Access Central TV, and we are here at Satellite Records down in the Bowery with that guy's so mad. yeah, with this, <laughs> we're making so much noise in here with the CEO and the founder of Satellite Records, Scott Richmond. Say hello. Hey, I don't know about down on the Bowery if that's like such a great uh, description. Is the Bowery still down? We're up on the Bowery. <laughs> <laughs> give us, give us, give us. Now we're Nolita, right? Now oh, it's like Nolita all. Now? Yeah, now this is the totally whole, like, legit thing. thing. This, legit. This, this uh, building was like actually pictured in, in uh, the front section. Uh, what do you call it? New York Times. You're kidding. About, For Nolita? Like, yeah. Wow. Their whole article about Nolita. It's Nolita funny. equals record stores mm. and, uh, and restaurant supply stores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just. What does it stand for? They're actually north, north of, of Little Italy. Oh. So. Nolita. Interesting. So we're in Nolita. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something new today. So you found Satellite Records when? Um, well, we started Satellite in 1992 um, as uh, an event company. So we started by uh, throwing big raves. Back in 92 was our first raves. one. Raves. <laughs> uh, before like, all the media and all the nastiness. And Jonathan, my partner, and I, it was all about like kind of a... Because we had visual artists, we had um, video people, we had, you know, it was different than it is now. I mean, so uh, it was very creative in that. That was what, 10 years ago? More, more than that, eight, 10 and a half years ago. 10 and a half years ago. And now you've got satellite records in Atlanta and, at, Boston. and Boston. And yeah, New York and the internet, most importantly, internet. Yeah. Are you, are you global? Uh, what, what, with the internet? Well, internet's always global. Well, of course, the internet's global, but do you have, like, a store in Europe, or? No, not yet, but we want to do London and Chicago and Montreal That's and awesome. Toronto. That's awesome. Well, we're going to talk more to you about that right after we introduce this M first video. M80. Yes. This there shot on Super uh, 16 millimeter, and this is Where's Your Daddy Where's Gone? Where's Your Daddy Gone? Where? Where? <laughs> <laughs>
it can be severed. You can love him from this world. Something we can share. Cause I'm in love with you, even though you're not aware. There's an altar burning deep inside your very own home. Hear the faces on the wall. They're singing, where'd your daddy go? Where's 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 your daddy go? Was, back. That was M80. Rocking out in a big bed. Dancing around the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so um, this is, again, Scott Richman. He's the CEO and founder of Satellite Records. And this is one of his uh, labels, Pipeline Music. And we actually are listening to VEC with Can't Get It. So, Scott, tell us what other labels are under Satellite. Uh, well, we have a label called Pitch Black, which is that little row over there, if you want to pan over there later. And, uh, and then Central Park is our house label, very like musical, um, you know, songs. And uh, the main artist on, on uh, Central Park is one of my best friends from college, actually. And That's we went to school right. for music. So um, Yeah, you're classically trained, aren't you? took piano since I was four, violin from when I was seven, around 14. Well, 13, I bought my first synthesizer, moved into like um, electronic music way, way back. That's 20 years ago. That's a little scary. <laughs> but you know your music, obviously. Yeah, well, that's my life <laughs> has been dedicated so. to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been dedicated to dance music since I was 13, and I'm 33 now, so... 20 years of uh, yeah. listening to everything, you know, starting out with Depeche Mode and Ultravox and the old days. Oh. In the, you know. My, my. Like, you know, 83, 84. And then, you know, now it's 2003 and a lot of things have happened, you know, house music and techno and it's progressive. And well, speaking of which, yeah. okay, I'm not familiar with this kind of music at all. And so I want to know what the difference is between, like, say, deep trance and deep house. Or help me out. I really don't get it at all. Well, we, you have to think of like th what dance music is. Like the way right. is that it's oriented more stylistically than artist driven. Okay. So then, so the way the listeners identify it is more through style. So that's why you hear about dance music being divided into so many sure. subgenres. Because you know, when people like pop music, they like such and such a group. And they like that group. They don't right. think, I like rock, or I like this, or mm -hmm. I like that. But in dance music, you have, you know, progressive, which is like this kind of sound, which is like kind of tribal rhythms, um, not very, it's not musical per se, right. i.e. it's not like songs. Right. And, um, and then there's just other records that are like similar in the genre. So it's like when someone's a fan of like this kind of music, they go and look for other records of that genre. Right. House music is like a little slower, more musical, more chords. I mean, if you really want to look at the origins of it, like progressive or trance or whatever, the origins of those of that music is like new wave, like those kind of chords, mm. like that. And then the origins of house is more like soul, and you know. So and what about trance? Trance, uh, like I said, like more like new wave style, oh, okay, like okay. going, um, and like not so many vocals, and right. uh, it's more like you have you have to experience it to know it, and as soon as you do, you do, mm. you know. It's like okay, this is trance. Oh, okay, because it's like yeah. th those records line up stylistically. It's like, in a way, it's, you want to think about it's like instrumentation, right. even though it's all synthesizers. The instrumentation would be similar for a house record, for all different house records, right. like how the drums go, 
how the rhythms go, like the speed of it, the kind of chords it uses. But the beauty of all of that is on the other end, on the dance floor, you, the DJs get to conduct how the parties go, right? With the different kinds of music and, you know, people. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's just, we'll talk more about that after the next video. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going We're to L.A., right? We're going to L.A. with Peppa Mache. Peppa Mache. Stay with us, Scott. Stay with us.
Girl's a diva. You know. Right? Scott, you know her, right? Uh, she's been recording around dance music for about uh, 10 years. Or That's eight awesome. Years, there. So after this break, we got Gray. Stay with us. Think being a big brother means you always have to be a perfect role model? Nice. Think again. <laughs> to learn more about becoming a big brother or big sister, call 1-888-412-BIGS. Welcome back. Up next we got Gray, and they have all the love in the world. We're here at Satellite Records. And what's the address? 59, right? 59 Bowery in Nolita, right? In, in Nolita, Nolita. <laughs> no less. <laughs> and this is Scott Richmond. He's the CEO and founder of Satellite Records. So watch the video. We have an interview with him. Hold out.
All right, that was great. They're out of Atlanta. Next time you're down there, they have a show quite a lot like ours. So when you're in Atlanta, check them out. Yeah. Well, we're not going to tell you the name of that show, right? No. No, <laughs> we're not. Because that might compete with our show, and we're better. So another question, Scott. Like, um, how many, how many artists does Satellite represent? Like, you mean on our labels? On your labels. Oh, we just. Just a few, you know, like three or four on each label. We have three labels, so, you know, probably 12 or 15 different artists. You know, dance music's a little different than, like, a regular label where an artist might make a record for, like, multiple labels. It's more like, uh, how would you say, like, freelance. You know, people aren't trapped down to, like, one label, unless it's, like, a very serious relationship and a very high-profile artist. But the... Um, you know, the average artist might do a different record for three or four different labels in a year or so. And it's something that's a little bit different than like regular music. An artist is actually the person who produces the dance track, for, like, or a band like you two would be the artist under a uh, label, right? So the artist is the person who produces the, the actual dance track, right? Well, it's interesting that you bring that up. Um, well, I mean, a producer. I get what you're saying, like there's a producer who's in the back of the studio directing a band, but in electronic music the producer and the artist are the same person because they're producing whatever they're producing. But what's interesting is, if I can find it here, so our, our artist Tortured Soul, here, Tortured Soul, uh -huh. is actually a full live band. And my friend Christian from college that I was telling you about, they have a, th that kind of Central Park, what we're doing is we're breaking like, we know that dance music needs to go to the next level. So, like, you know, Christian's a full, he's a songwriter. There's a full four-piece band, you know, and then we do, like, house mixes, but um, a lot of the stuff has all four musicians on it, and it's, it's a real band. So there's a real band, and sometimes there's a producer, or sometimes he's the producer. So, you know, as, as uh, the music grows and develops, it kind of goes back to... Uh, the roots of like how music has been going, you know, back in like let's say the disco era or whatever. So there is like, um, you know, dance music is definitely in flux, and uh, you know the trend itself has been, uh, how would you say, like, um, you know, dealing with that people illegally download stuff right. and illegally copy CDs has made it. You, this music is fully independent, pretty much. There's almost no major label involvement. So, you know, anything that you see here is probably sold, you know, 2,000 to 4,000 copies. That's about it. And so um, th the effect of, like, people illegally downloading or burning CDs is huge on these labels. Right. It's really created a big crisis where if you lose, look, a major label can afford to lose half its sales and just lay off, like Sony laid off 2% of its workforce. But a little label that only has, like, one guy or two guys and, and some artists, when they lose, you know, a third of their sales, they can't afford it's to do business huge, anymore. Yeah. And so, um, you know, people don't realize like when they're copying stuff, the effect they think the effect is on the major labels, but it's really on the independents. So you hear you hear that, guys? Please That's just support so the indies. Know. And I also yeah. I have to applaud the fact that you support your friends from college and that kind of thing and lifting each other up. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it's it's funny because uh, you know. Michael and I have known each other a while. We know <laughs> we know about complaining versus doing something. Exactly. Right. And uh, he had a band, and I was complaining that they didn't sell enough and that they weren't famous enough. S so I stopped complaining, and I stepped up to the plate, and I helped him create this whole thing. That's I mean, awesome. It, it came That's out so of like excellent. just one track that um, no one was going to put out, and I just thought it was brilliant. Then we did house mixes. That's that great. record ended up selling 7,000 copies. Like, it was huge. What? So, uh, oh my God! That was I'm here, guys, from a no, few shows ago. You? That wasn't I'm here. That was I'm, th I'm talking about Tortured Soul. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about me. Uh, <laughs> oh Michael my always God. thinks he's, we're talking about. Him. I, it's always about me, guys. <laughs> there's there's, like, there's more than one amazing. Michael. <laughs> yeah, oh <my laughs> we're, we're both like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's funny. The, the but that's okay. That's right, okay. The story behind I'm here is actually I was supposed to put that record out too and uh, the original track. <laughs> and then I sent Michael over and I said, whatever you do, don't make the vocals too faggy. <laughs> he ends up doing a song about going to Chelsea. Life in Chelsea, guys. <laughs> but it ends up you know, getting signed to a bigger label and rather than stand in the way and like try to put it out, you know, I, 
you know, I let it get to as many people as possible, and I'm happy to be part of it. People know me as Michael or Mikkel, but most of y'all know me as Mikkel. So, but oh, this guy is huge. Yeah, this guy is huge. Scott is huge. So we're gonna introduce our next video right now. His mother ma named him <laughs> Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, th this video is called uh, the the He's band so is mad. called God the Band, <laughs> and the sh uh, the the name of the song is Give called Lifter. <laughs> Stop teasing me! <laughs> it's a it's a musical comedy video. So watch it. I don't think he I, I think it me. I think you got it from your dad. Yeah, I probably did. Yeah, of course it is. What do you expect? I've been stumbling along, although this world just carries on Now with the weight of everything, it always tries to bring us down I see shoulders that keep slumping, cause the city keeps on dumping on our heads When I look at the boys, I see they are tomorrow's dead And they often lose their smiles, cause of what comes in their head They look so low, what can I do to help them out? I lift them up, it's what I do I'm lifting you up, so be glad Clicking to the rhythm that keeps running things around I need to know the way things stand So I can keep my way, keep standing on the ground And though I have a strong will I surely have a stronger back I can carry you for hours And my grip will never stop Now let me lift you, then I'll show you Yes, that everything is gonna be okay There is something magical la, 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 natural but physical That's something that tells me la, to lift them To know that there is hope, that there are reasons to keep living, to keep heading down that road. I feel I must, I have to help to bring the spirits of our young to higher planes. And it feels so good to hold a young man in my hands. As I hold him high above, he looks around, he understands that it's better up above than walking on the same or scrubbing drop with them. I'm lifting you up, so be glad. God the band and I know about them only because whoever does their publicity sticks their stickers all over the East Village and it's awesome because I knew exactly who they were so good good for you guys good publicity yeah. keep on working at God <laughs> so after the break the we've got our buddies from Melbourne Australia Asylum, Asylum TV. TV so stay with us every week we return all our cans and bottles <laughs> yeah we hope to reduce the world's waste but aluminum? <laughs> it's like gold. <laughs> oh, yeah. Environmental defense. Get green. For more environmentally friendly tips, go to getgreen.com. Oh, there's a bottle. Where? Right what? over there. To your left. To your left. There you go. You got it. Ah! Ah! 
Asylum for another huge Ultimate Drummers Day weekend, which is a long weekend this time, and it's also the 10th anniversary. Those of you who watched last year would be, already know what we're doing. Those of you who haven't, you're in for an absolute treat. We've got the best drummers from all around here, and I have with me world famous Woo! drummer extraordinaire. We have had some drumming beyond John comprehension. How this are is you? I am having a great time. Asylum TV, this is huge! <laughs> huge! There's so much drumming and people and bands and music. My my brains are gonna explode! <laughs> All over the place. All over Not the over place. Me. It's gonna be disgusting. <laughs> How'd you go earlier with your workshop? This, I had a workshop this morning. It was on the people, the feeling and the vibe. It was early in the morning. Who needs coffee when you have drums in the morning? This is on the power, the synergy, the magic. I love you so much! This is huge! <laughs> asylum! I belong in an asylum! I think Why so. am I yelling? <laughs> God, I think we better this, go into the this asylum. Is great, here we go. Dun, dun. <laughs> All the way from New Jersey to, well, it is sunny here in Melbourne today. I don't know about five minutes later. We will wait and see. You know how it goes. Wait five minutes and it will change. Is Joe Bergamini. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How's your trip over here? My trip here was long, but as I said, it was, <laughs> it was very much worth it. I'm having a wonderful time here in Melbourne. And you're here for the three days? Yes, I'm here for the whole weekend. Uh, actually, I arrived uh, a little early to spend some time with my friend Sam Aliano, the amazing drummer from Melbourne. He's a nice man. Yes, he's a nice guy. <laughs> so you've been gigging around here as well? Uh, actually, as... no. I, I um, come from New Jersey, as I said, the New York City area. So you're not and, doing um, any gigs here? No, I'm just here for the weekend. I'll be, I played uh, this uh, Friday morning workshop and then three performances at the show. And then head back to New York and uh, my little boy. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You're not staying for long, but I can understand yeah. why you want to go back because you're a little boy. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. What else have you been doing? Uh, actually, on the tracks I'm playing here of the weekend, I have a band called Forefront. We have a new record out. It's our third. Uh, I've been playing tracks uh, from that album, and I'm hoping to maybe come back with the band to Australia at some point. That would be nice. Yeah, I'm really hoping for that. Where can uh, we get the CD? Actually, I think um, Vorticity Music will be you know, selling that CD. And uh, I do quite a bit of teaching in New York, so um, I can't wait to go back and... Uh, tell them I'm blown away by the drumming here in Australia. The level of uh, talent and drumming here is amazingly high. So I'm uh, really looking forward to getting back to tell everyone in New York about this. Oh, we'd love it. You, we'd be singing our praises. It's great. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll have no problem with that at all. Sure. Thank you so much for being You're on the You're very silent. welcome. Thanks a lot.
We have the heavy metal drummer with us from the Ultimate Drummers Weekend. He has he started out as drum tech for Anthrax, which uh, they're doing a big revival now with all of this stuff that was happening oh, yeah. long ago. They've got a new album coming out yep. soon. We're not here to talk about them, though. You drum for Rob, Z Rob Zombie as well, yeah, and you tell us all the other people you've drummed for. Thank you for being on Asylum, and welcome oh, yeah. to the show. My pleasure. It's great to be here. Um, let's see. I started off as a drum tech for Anthrax, then I played with Exodus for a while. Yep. The Rage Band Exodus and Testament after that I did a record. You're back with Testament, aren't you? No, no. Well, I'm, we're, I did a record with Testament last year. Oh, okay. Well, do you want to plug it? Oh, it's great. It's, we, we just did like um, the, the best songs from the first two records. You know, like you know, we just redid the songs with better production and Alex Goldman came back and played guitar. So it was fun. It really, I haven't played that kind of music in quite a while. So he was playing with White Zombie and Rob. So to go back and play Thrash was, was fun. Yeah, it, was <laughs> it looks like you were a workout, yeah. Yeah, it was good. Now, how, long, how many times have you been to our country? This is the second time. Second time? Yeah, we actually toured here in 95 with White Zombie. Oh, yeah. you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so right. Yeah, I'm trying to get back soon enough. Yeah, when I get back home, I'm going to give Rob a little kick in the boot, you know, and tell him to get his ass out here. Yeah, yeah well, we'd love you to come back. It's, oh, it's it. been great having you here for the Ultimate Drummers Weekend. Now, you've been doing some workshops as well. I did one yesterday. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, a lot of people? A lot of people, yeah, a lot of questions, so it went over well. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. Good on you, mate. <laughs> you do that quite well, actually. Good on you, mate. Yeah. And um, you're about to go on stage very soon. What are we going to expect to see for you in the auditorium? Um, I'm going to play uh, like a medley of White Zombie songs I did. And oh, the, cool. Yeah, basically just playing a chopped down version of the songs, you know, with the loops and, you know, the clicks so you could hear where they basically play with the band. And at the end of one of the songs, there's like a 16 bar thing. I just kind of solo a bit. And then I'm going to play a track from the New Testament record, and like, well, old song, Into the Pit. And then after that, just just do whatever, just rip, you know. And if we want to get a hold of you, how can we do that? Um, a hold of me. Yeah. You want my phone number? Oh, no, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I guess the. Don't tell uh, me it's five five no. five something. No, it ain't one of those. I tell you that much. Um, I email actually. Yeah. Yeah. At well, uh, the firm, the firm's on management, so that's the best way to do that. Okay, we'll do it that way. Yeah. No worries. And now your tip for all the drummers out there and the people who want to be like you, because there's plenty of them. Yes, especially out here. There's some great drummers, man. Isn't there? At least they young. They sound so young. I know. These a lot of support. Are, these kids are ripping. So, yeah, just keep at it, man. As long as you have the passion and, and the belief, anything can happen. If it happened to me, it could happen to anybody. So, <laughs> just believe in yourself, you know? And you're going to be a hell of a nice guy like he is, too. Thank you very much, Joe. You're welcome.
great. I'm here with Vanessa Amorossi. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. <laughs> so what are you doing down here today? Eating. <laughs> Eating? No, I'm um, watching people play. Drums. <laughs> You're looking a bit camera shy there, surely not. Um, yeah, it's actually caught me by surprise, you know. <laughs> not often that you come to see drummers and people want to interview on that. So how's your album going? Very good. Yeah, very good. It's coming along. So, Different sounds, similar sounds? Um, very, very different sounds, yeah. I loved your last album. It was fantastic. Ta, thank you. Thanks. Well, uh, yeah, we can only hope for the best for the new album, but it's very far apart from the last one, yeah. So did you enjoy the drummers weekend? It's been, it's been unreal. It's been really, really good. It's my first time sort of doing this sort of stuff, so it's great. Are you coming back next year? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So I'll see you here then. Yep, will do. Thanks very much, Vanessa. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe Perry. And Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, here for RAD. Recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. Never, never, never let someone you know get behind the wheel if they've been drinking. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. with Dom Famularo, the person who doesn't need coffee because he's so excited <laughs> about what's been going on here at the Ultimate Drummers Weekend. It's been huge so far. You've had a great day already. I am having a great life and <laughs> being here in Australia, specifically here in Melbourne, is absolutely magical. The drummers and the people and the energy and the love for art is so tremendous. It really is great. I mean, I've met some great young drummers and having performed the workshop and doing all that, the, it's just non-stop. It's full on. It's like I explained in my workshop, it's like taking a shower. When I step in the shower, I get in. Some people turn the hot on and they kind of hold their hand and they put the cold on and they put their hand. Then they wait till they get it balanced and they step in. I don't have that kind of time. It's full on. I get in the shower, I turn the faucets on all the way and I shower. Whatever happens, happens. This is how it is here. It's just on, full on all the time. This is the great fun about drumming. It's great. And look out for the scolds on him too for when he turns on the hot one a little bit too fast. Oh, now man. you're also going to be playing in the auditorium. Yes, I'll be playing in the auditorium tomorrow. And what surprises uh, do you have for us? Because you do. Well, you know always. what's great about what I do, what I enjoy, is I never know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so it's not until right on that moment when I walk on stage and they announce my name and I walk on and I say to myself, okay, here we go. And then I just let it rip. I mean, it's the, it's the, the magic in the moment of that time. I feel where the people are at. I feel where I'm at. And we just try and reach it to the highest level of synergy. And that to me is when the magic begins. Excellent. Now it's two years since you've been here. Yes. How's your book been going? Because you had your last book, one promoted. Yes, book. I, my book, is, I've got a drum book out that's called It's Your Move. And the motivational book, which is called The Cycle of Self-Empowerment. And we can get them from all good bookstores? You can get them from all good bookstores. You can track down Drum Tech. You can go to Amazon.com and you can really have some fun with it. And it's really, really, it's been a helpful book to a lot of people. When I get the feedback and the emails from people, and they really are touched by the process and some of the formulas that are in there. I'm, I'm really moved by it, so it's really great stuff. So you're doing yeah. a good thing for everyone. I'm trying so hard to do what I think is, is, is needed, and uh, if we push ourselves to the highest level, magic happens. Just like what you're doing. This is great, the fact that you have this opportunity to have these people come by and see you and share your talent and this insanity of what you have with Isn't Asylum TV. Sweet. This is the, the best. The insanity of it, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all part of the fun of it all. And Drum Tech, which has been great to organize all this here, to put this together, has been magic to organize this and to allow us international players to come by and experience the magic of it's Melbourne. It's been wonderful. They're great. They do a lot. Now, you have been a performer for many, many years, and you've drummed for probably more than all that. All of my life, yeah. All your life. What is your tip for all the young, aspiring drummers out there? Oh, there's plenty. this actually is pretty easy. If you follow your dream and your passion, your passion fuels you. If you follow that, your instinct and your love for your talent you can never be wrong. Follow your heart and enjoy the journey that life will take you on. Easy as that. Thank you, Dom, Thank for being so on Asylum TV. Thanks so much. Yeah, <laughs> take it on. Now, I just want to give you one of my... <laughs> I know what's here. coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was...
was great. <laughs> Woo! Gosh, I think I just exfoliated your skin. <laughs> Woo! Thank you very much. Saves me doing thank it. Thank you very thank much. You. Don't I wouldn't mind doing that every morning. I'll tell you that. Thank you so much, and thank you so much. <laughs>
uh, through the studying again of Freddie that has made so much sense to me is that is to not do so much of the work. exhausting three days but it's been lots of fun plenty of people to meet everyone's been very very kind to us again this year we've had a great time have you guys had a good time oh my gosh exhausting i'm on fire now i'm wound <laughs> up are you kidding <laughs> after hearing this intense drumming for three days with this You're level so of playing oh my gosh this is unbelievable the talent here is absolutely unbelievable it is and they start them from this big in the in australia it's amazing they are, the kids are fantastic. The standard here of musicians, and specifically drums, is un I am so thoroughly impressed by what I've seen, and I've had to judge some of this. This hasn't been easy. Yeah, that wouldn't have been an easy task at all. I'm glad it was you and not me. It was, we were down to half points to get some of these kids to kind of find out who the heck was going to win this year. It was absolutely phenomenal. Went down to fractions. I don't know how these guys judge them, Sarah. They've got these competitions. Everyone's really good, and they have to make a decision. Could you do it? Uh, no, I wouldn't want to be put under that kind of pressure. <laughs> it is, it's pressure. It's nothing more than pressure. And I suppose you handle pressure very well. I, I, as you can see, I handle, I handle, every once in a while I start to, to just to twitch a little, but it's fine. No, I mean, the pressure, the pressure is every day. This is what it is. I travel the world playing drums. And this particular show that Drum Tech puts on thoroughly amazes me because the level and heart of all the players is really what it comes down to to share that level of enthusiasm with music and these drummers from small kids to guys like Virgil Donati. Virgil, this guy's an alien from some ridiculous planet way the hell out in the universe. He's unbelievable. Apparently he doesn't sleep very much, he just plays. He doesn't need sleep. I mean, he's got so much intensity and mm. when he expresses himself at the highest level of discipline and art, he is setting new standards. If we can find that kind of energy, I think we should bottle it and sell it. Oh man, let me know because I could use some of it. <laughs> I think God. you're fine, Don. Now, are you coming back next year? Not working. What's that? Are you coming back next year? Uh, you know, Frank has invited me in the year 2004, so I will be back in the next couple of years. So our cheeks get a couple of years to I'm recover, I think. Sure yeah. <laughs> oh, and I get, and I'm there. I'm gonna come by. I got. Oh, man. I just wanted to exfoliate your skin, so anytime I can help out, you know, I just want to Nobody be Nobody exfoliates as good as you, Don well, Femular. You know, I've heard that from him before. I don't want to brag, but uh, there it is right there, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been great to meet, meet you here once more. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much for being part of Asylum and the Thanks. openings and the closings and every other party. He's been through the whole lot. <laughs> Thank you for being part of Asylum, your first time. Yeah, She's done a great job. Excellent. I really enjoyed it. It's been a great first gig. It has. It can only go up from here. Thank you so much. See you all next oh, time. Oh, man, Asylum TV. Excellent. Yes. Woo. <laughs>so but we want to hear from you so if you got music it doesn't matter mail it into us send it to us a couple ways you can get a hold of us one way is through our website you can email us through our website at www.accesscentral.tv or you can snail mail us at 527 3rd Avenue Suite 166 New York New York 10016 that's exactly right to send you their snails yeah, don't send us snails. That's gross. No, do. <laughs> uh, do it. Do it. Send it to Nell. No, Anyways, <laughs> that's another show. I'm Mikkel, and this is Nell, and this is Scott. Thank you, Scott. We'll see you again.
Think being a big brother means taking time out of your schedule to tutor a kid in algebra? Think again. To learn more about becoming a big brother or big sister, call 1-888-412-BIGS.